Now I'm going to show you how to totally destroy your opponent when he plays the French defense. So we are playing the move 1e4 and black goes 1e6. It's one of the most popular openings in chess. And how we are going to refute it? We are just going to follow former world-class top player Vasily Ivanchuk, grandmaster from uh, Ukraine, who have managed to win almost everything in chess apart from the World Championship uh, title. And he's playing in the last round of the Reykjavik Open with the white pieces against the amateur player Oscar uh, Pollock, who's uh, more than uh, 500 rating points uh, lower rated than, uh, than Ivanchuk. So I like to take these kind of games because we will definitely get to see what the main problems for black are in this uh, opening. So let's see what happens. Even if you're not interested in the French, I would recommend you to follow this, um, this channel and to subscribe and also watch this game because there are a lot of instructive and beautiful attacking and tactical uh, ideas. So let's just dive straight into the action and see what Ivan Schuch does now against this French opening. It's d4, the main move, d5, and now knight c3. De uh, developing the knight, protecting the pawn. Bishop b4 is the main move to pin the knight on c3 and white goes e5. Grabbing space is one of the most principled ways of uh, playing against the, the French and it will help you to build up and a nice attacking position uh, with the help of extra space. So knight e7, developing the knight, white goes for the move a3, attacking the bishop, bishop takes knight, pawn takes back. So here we have this uh, double pawn structure, but still white has a nice space advantage and the bishop pair, black playing the main move c5. And there are different ways of playing. I mean, in the past, a lot of people Played here the move queen g4 to attack the pawn on g7. Very aggressive move and still very interesting, but there's also a lot of opening theory. There's also the possibility of just developing the knight to uh, f3 or even play a move like a4 with ideas of later getting the bishop to a more active uh, diagonal. So these are more positional ideas for white. But the modern way of playing and what you see nowadays in a lot of openings is to use your h pawn. So white goes here for the move h4. Very interesting and popular idea. So the plan is uh, not only to advance your pawn to h6 and try to create weaknesses against the, the black king side, but it's also a very nice way of trying to uh, get your uh, rook activated. As in certain cases, the rook can come to h3 so that it uh, not only can protect the pawn on c3, but it can join the attack via g3 or f3 or somewhere else along the third rank. So, very nice, useful uh, move. Knight bc6, white first plays here the move h5. And this is always an interesting uh, moment. Is black going to stop the march of the h1? Will he play the move h6? That's possible, but then white still has a lot of ideas uh, to continue the attack. Maybe later on, the pawn on uh, g7 will be weak. Pawn on h6 can be targeted later as well. There's a lot of opening theory, but here black decided to play the move queen a5 first to um, attack the pawn on c3. And it basically forces the bishop to go to d2 to protect the um, pawn on c3. Now c takes d4 is not a problem. You can just take back with the pawn. And here black goes for the move queen a4. So black is putting quite a bit of pressure against the pawn on d4. And you would expect white to, uh, to do something about it, uh, but not so easy because black is attacking it uh, a couple of times. But the main strategy here for white is to ignore the pawn on d4, strangely enough, as what you want to do is to open the position so that with your bishops, your space advantage, your pieces are able to approach the um, black king. Interestingly, this position was even reached in an earlier game of Ivanchuk himself when he was playing from the black side against uh, Grandmaster Emil Sotovsky. In that game, h6 was played. Very interesting move. Very challenging move. We will get to see that idea later. First here, Ivanchuk played now the move rook b1. And his idea is to get a bishop to, uh, to b5. So for instance, if you do take on d4, you first play bishop b5 to attack the queen. If queen takes on a3, now you take back on d4. You are a pawn down, but you have tremendous compensation. Rook h3 can come with tempo. As you can see, the queen is lacking squares. And of course, the pawn on d4 cannot be taken by the knight because the bishop on b5 is spinning it. This is already really bad for, um, for black. So after uh, rook b1, 
Black goes for the move a6. Typical move to uh, cover the b5 square, preventing bishop uh, b5. White goes knight f3, getting the knight into the game. And it's a pawn sacrifice. C takes d4. C takes d4. Knight takes d4. As the queen still protects the knight on uh, d4. Black is even threatening now to take the pawn on c2. That is a huge threat. As then the king is in, uh, in big trouble. But bishop d3. Now white is getting... A huge lead in development. Bishop is excellently placed here, defending the pawn and also looking at the black uh, king side. Now, for instance, if you would castle here, which is not a good move because of rook b4. The rook will join the attack. It's hitting the queen and the knight. This was all not played in the game, but it's a nice line I want to show you. If you take on f3 to avoid the loss of material, take back with the queen. And if the queen goes somewhere, then you have something like h6, and black is already completely busted because all these pieces, they are looking at the black uh, king. If you do play something like uh, g6, there is queen f6 and mate is simply unavoidable. If you play knight f5, you whip off the knight and it's going to be checkmate on the next move. So here we see that black has a huge problem on the dark squares. He is missing his dark squared bishop and that's a typical problem in the French. Let's go back to the game. Because castling kingside was not played, black played here and then moved knight e7 to c6 to strengthen the knight on d4, preventing the rook from coming to b4. But now white goes h6 anyway. As you can see, we saw in the previous line that inserting this move h6, provoking that, um, uh, that pawn coming forward, it will really weaken the square f6, maybe later the g7 square, we will get to see that in the game, actually, because here, well, black first decided to take on f3 with check. Queen takes back. If you play g6, queen f6, and, well, a lot of problems once again on these uh, dark squares. Instead of playing g6, black decided to grab another pawn. Like, that is not, not dangerous at all. You, I, mean, I don't know what black was thinking here, but... Let's see, queen g3 attacking the knight on e5, putting pressure against the pawn on g7. So not much options here for black at all. Knight takes d3 check and you do take back with the pawn. So you're two pawns down and black now play the move g6, trying to keep the position closed. But here, apart from that you're learning how to uh, play against the French, this position also shows you that with major pieces on the board, with queens and rooks, it's all about king safety. And the presence of opposite colored bishops will only uh, make that even more uh, clear because white's bishop is a monster. It's much better than this bishop on, um, on c8, which is uh, very passive. And we will see how white is gonna infiltrate along these uh, dark squares. Queen e5 played in the game, hitting the rook on h8. The rook has a big problem if you castle, it's checkmate, of course. That is not, uh, not a possibility. Rook g8 is also not a move you really want to, uh, to play. Rook f8, something like queen f6, with the idea of getting the bishop to b4 to hit the rook. Queen e7 is there. It's not clear what black is going to do in the meantime. Anyway, in the game, the move f6 was, uh, was played. And what is, what is actually interesting is that I think the move rook g8, it was not played here because probably black was afraid now of the move queen to g7. That is a very unusual attacking idea, but you're hitting the rook. And if you take the queen, you take back with the pawn and there's nothing you can do against this move uh, g8 uh, queen on the next move. So white is eventually just going to be a rook up. So therefore the move f6 was played. Not a nice move, but not much options for black. Queen takes f6, hitting the rook again. And um, now if rook f8, queen g7. And well, the queen is in. The king's position is really vulnerable. So it looks really bad. Here, rook g8 was, uh, was played. And for the moment, it looks as if everything is under control. Now the same idea with queen g7 doesn't work because you take and the king can stop the passed pawn. So forget about that idea. But we do have other ways of opening up Black's uh, position. And Ivanchu came up with a brilliant idea. He didn't play bishop b4, which threatens queen 
e7, but the queen will come back to d7 and the mating threats have been parried. But instead of bishop b4, look at this. Beautiful rook sacrifice. Rook takes b7, deflecting the bishop from guarding the pawn on e6. White is also threatening checkmate on e7 as the rook covers the seventh rank. Bishop takes b7, queen takes e6 with check, hitting the rook on g8. Now the king has only two options. If the king goes to f8, now you would think this is simple. I can just give a check with the bishop on b4, but that is a huge blunder. Look at this. Queen takes b4, giving up the queen. Pawn takes b4, rook e8, and all of a sudden you're losing the queen on e6. So don't do that. Bishop b4, shocking blunder. Much better though is this move. Rook h3. This rook lift is what I had been announcing earlier with a threat of giving a check on f3 with checkmate. And you see that this pawn on h6, it also covers the g7 square. So it's a really important attacking weapon. If you play d4 to cover the f3 square, now the fourth rank has been closed. The queen is no longer defending there. So the rook comes to h4. Threatening, checkmate on f4, g5, attacking the rook, covering the f4 square, you just eliminate that annoying pawn. Bishop takes g5, if you do take, it's rook f4, it is checkmate. Fantastic line. That means Oscar Pollock, no chance to go here for king f8, decided to play the move king d8. Tricky move, because you think I can take the rook on g8 with check, should be winning. But okay, it does allow the move queen e8 with a counter check and it does force the exchange of queens. Something you rather avoid. But what is white planning to do then? Look at the next move by Ivanchuk. He has just sacrificed a rook, keep that in mind. But he just calmly castled kingside here. Absolutely amazing idea. So the plan is that at some point you want to give a check, force the king to go either to one of the open files and then the rook will be able to join. Let me show you one line. If you do play rook e8 to attack the queen, now it's very important that if you do give a check, the queen may be able to get back to d7. So much more precise is to start with the move bishop a5 check. The king can't go anywhere. You gotta take on a5, then queen d6 check, king c8, rook c1, and it's gonna be checkmate in a few moves. Rook e8 doesn't work. Queen d7, by the way, also not an option. There's bishop a5, check, king c8, rook c1. And uh, after the king goes to b8, you pick up the queen and it will be made once again in a few moves. So black, after castling kingside, decided to play here the move king c7, trying to run away. But the rook comes to c1 with check. And now you're absolutely helpless as uh, black. If you try to run away with the king, it will be queen e5, check. Beautiful move. So the king goes to a7, then it's bishop to e3. With check, the king can't go anywhere. Now after d4, you can simply take on d4 when black will have to give up the queen, but even faster is queen c5, check. And after king b8, it's bishop f4 with checkmate. And here you see the strength of the cooperation between white pieces, the queen and the bishop and the rook. They're totally dominating its counterparts. Beautiful line. King b8 is not possible. Bishop c6 was therefore played. It's a much more stubborn defense, but it's not going to be enough. Bishop a5. Beautiful idea. You're giving check. The king almost can't go anywhere. You also cannot really take the uh, bishop on a5. It can be met by queen takes c6. Now, if the king goes back to d8, at the minimum here is to take the rook on a8 with check. And on the next move, you take the rook on g8, your rook up, game over. If the king goes to the other side, you would like to go rook b1 and it's almost checkmate, but there is still queen b5. And who knows, maybe black can try to escape into an endgame of uh, queen versus two rooks. So once again, because of the misplacement of the rooks, they are so badly placed, you have time to prevent that queen b5 idea. By starting here with the move a4, what an incredible idea to take away this square. And it's always going to be checkmate soon. If you go queen b4, it's queen c7, for instance. So yeah, that's that's not going to help. And if you play uh, king a7, well, there's queen d7 and it's going to be checkmate uh, very soon. Let's say king b8 and then uh, rook b1, it's, uh, it's just game over. Back to the game. After bishop a5, king b7, 
was played, but now it's rook to b1. And uh, if you block with the bishop, then the bishop is pinned, which means that the queen can make use of the fact that the bishop doesn't control the d7 square. In case of king b8, it's checkmate on c7. Beautiful idea of uh, playing queen d7, exploiting the pin on the b-file. In case of king a7, well, there is a queen e7 check. Once again, the king has been de deprived from all the uh, remaining squares. While in case of bishop d7, only move, there is queen c5 with checkmate. What a fantastic demonstration. Masterclass, grandmaster against amateur. These are the most instructive games. Black, uh, Black resigned after queen e7. As I said, most instructive game. Hope you get some new ideas on how to play against the French. But apart from that, I hope you also understand the relative value of your pieces. The opposite colored bishops, the fact that you can sacrifice a number of pawns for the initiative. In the final position, look at the rooks, look at the king. There's no harmony. Also, the queen on a4, totally out of play. Fantastic masterclass. Let me know in the comments what you think about this game. And uh, of course, don't forget to subscribe.